You know, I think for once, you're more pissed about a Melissa McCarthy uh -oh. movie than I am. Which which is a nice change of pace. After all these years uh -huh. of you just going, oh, it's not that bad. Hey, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. I... <laughs> Oh, my God. This is the new Melissa McCarthy movie that needs to be called Can You Ever Forgive Me? <laughs> oh, holy crap. <laughs> so, God damn, where do I need to start with this movie? Um, so we just got out of Life of the Party, which is a movie where Melissa McCarthy uh, goes back to college so just stay home and watch Back to School, guess, please, yeah. for the love this of is, God. This is gender swapped Back to School if Back to School was complete shit. Oh <laughs> man, we ran into yeah. Gino in there, who's going to the. Uh, he wasn't sure what movie he was going to see at nine thirty, so he he was like, "Well, there's Breaking In and Life of the Party," and they're like, and he's like. So have you seen Breaking In? And I'm like, no, I haven't. But I just sat through Life of the Party. Trust me, <laughs> I'm saving your life right now. This movie is aggressively unfunny. <laughs> it is violently hard to sit through. <laughs> and it's another one where it's, it's directed by... Uh, Ben Falcone, is that it? Yeah. Her husband. And he's also co-wrote it. She co-wrote it, I, I believe. Yeah. And they, they need to stop doing that. Whenever we talk about Melissa McCarthy movies that aren't very good, it's ones where, where that's the case. Yeah. Between uh, Tammy and... Did they also the do... Oh, they, yeah, they the did The boss. boss. I think that's... Identity Thief? Did they also do that? I don't think that was particular combo was in play in that movie. Yeah, I'm but... not... That I, I can't really, really remember, but... Now, there's been a couple that I haven't seen uh, that she's done. She's done some stuff that I've liked a lot. This one, of the ones that I've seen... Uh, is by far the worst. By far for me was the most difficult one to sit through with its 1,000 endings that it had. It's multiple times where a climax happens, I guess, but that suggests it even had any kind of structure to begin with. Uh, what about... Because, I, yeah, I believe I hated this movie more than you did. Where, where do you rank this on ones of hers that you didn't like? I'll put it above Tammy. Yeah. Because I could... Oh, fuck. You know what? I'll put it above Tammy and Identity Thief because I couldn't stand either one of those fucking movies. Mm-hmm. This isn't a good movie. <laughs> it, it most certainly is not. But I can at least have... Maya Rudolph in this movie mm -hmm. and God bless her she's the only reason this thing gets anywhere near above the other two because she's trying she's trying and those brief moments where she's in there she's somewhat enjoyable makes me forget that this is a Melissa McCarthy movie for she, the briefest of moments she was trying <laughs> and um, Gillian Jacobs was really yeah. really trying There, there, there wasn't a single laugh I got out of this movie. Like, even though, like, they were they were two I could point to and say that they're really trying to make something work here. I sat through Overboard last week, which was also bad, but it was just kind of forgettably bad, and I was more just sort of exhausted sitting through it. But this movie, though, was so hard because it doesn't... I could never tell when it was coming towards any kind of act in this film. It is just a series of <clears throat> a lot of ad-libbing, a lot of just different scenarios that they're going through, whether it's things that you've seen in this kind of movie before, like an 80s party, or they all get high, or they all go out drinking, 
or some sex jokes and things like that. It is every single thing you would expect from a college movie just put in this film with nothing really linking one scene to the other. Some scenes just end, and because of that, this is, what, this is partly why it feels like it has so many goddamn endings, because there's... I couldn't tell when we were being close to the end, because nothing really felt like it ever started. <laughs> like, the, the setup comes at the beginning of the film, when she and Matt Walsh, who plays her husband, who is basically playing Lewis's character from Disco, and they drop their daughter off at college, and while still parked there at the sorority house, that's when he decides to tell her that they're getting divorced. And so she's divorced, she's single now, and, and she left college because of him, so that's why she wants to go back and finish up her archaeological degree. And nothing in this movie... No, and there's, part, there's your plot. That's Yeah, that's that's it. That, that's the plot of the movie. But no one, it, it, it's just, everyone is just there to react to what the main character is doing. The daughter in this film not once acts like anyone who would ever find out that their parents are going through a divorce. Yeah. It's like, oh, but mom, really? Are you, you're embarrassing me and whatever. Oh, and... The two bullies, the two like mean girls who are just there to be bitchy for no reason and for whatever reason are also in the archaeological class. That's when we first meet them. They, they only exist just to be like, ugh, lame mom, I don't know who's a bigger loser. I'm gonna go do something cool now. Bye. Yeah, there's no arc with those characters. And then they're all friends finally or something. It's weird. Because, because she says they shouldn't fight. You shouldn't fight. They all come together at the end for this big party that they're doing so that Melissa McCarthy can raise money to be in school. <clears throat> and they get all these people at the party by saying... Uh, uh, Christina Aguilera is going to be there. That Christina Aguilera is going to be at this party. And Gillian Jacobs tweets this out because she's internet famous and has three million followers because she was in a coma. <clears throat> That's it. That alone should have brought a bunch of people to this party already. The fact she's got so many goddamn... That she's apparently famous, I guess. But no, Christina Aguilera does show up at this party because lo and behold, the goth girl who Melissa McCarthy is bunked with happens to be Christina Aguilera's cousin who has nothing but well of course I'll go this is a cause I believe in of course I'll go here fucking god damn it oh it's just you know I feel like these moments are lifted from other movies like that's lifted straight from Bridesmaids when they got Wilson Phillips. Oh, but you know okay. what? Wilson, that scene was more well... Well, that movie and just in general was a better movie. Yeah. But those points actually... That's the thing. It's like something like that in Bridesmaids is set up mm -hmm. early on and the payoff comes later. Mm -hmm. This is just, oh, we're going to say Christina Aguilera's coming because, oh, the concert was tonight. Oh, tell everybody that she's coming. <laughs> there's no there's no setup it just kind of happens there's no setup for any of this shit there really isn't she has this love interest in the movie melissa mccarthy does who's a young guy at the school and the the character is just creepy he's creepy like any minute now it feels like this is gonna turn into some kind of stalker film <laughs> oh he's just in the cougar hunt that's all i, I mean it was played like it was supposed to be endearing but the character just comes across like a psychopath most of the time well well especially after the first night they hook up and she's scrolling through these hundreds of texts that he sent her i'd been like no no campus <laughs> campus police needs to talk to you right now it, it, most of Melissa McCarthy's lines in this movie is just her really, really, really rambling 
rambling on and on and on so that there's not a split second of a pause anywhere even if it's just react like mentioning things that are in front of her like ooh this bottle right here this bottle ooh this here's a pamphlet i'll take this pamphlet or just repeating something that somebody else just told her like someone will say a line like oh that that tree looks like it's going to fall over melissa mccarthy go oh fall over yeah fall over ad libbing oh <laughs> And I, I could see under different writing, under different direction, how this could could work. Well, if it was actually trying, because they're, I, they're trying to show her timidness, her not, her kind of not believing in herself type thing. Yeah. I understand why the character does that. It just doesn't work. Because it's it's a shit directed and shit written movie. Yeah. Like I could see how this character could and work under better it, direction. It, and it it amazes me that she could come out with this shit, and then she comes out with other stuff like Saint Vincent. Or yeah, yeah. Stuff with Gilmore Gilmore Girls wasn't her writing, but she can act. No, she absolutely. has a depth of character that all of a sudden she starts writing shit and you can't see it and I'm just like how did you you were on Gilmore Girls for what 10 fucking years mm -hmm. how did how did none of that smart witty charming writing quick witted just snap snappy dialogue how did none of that in the entire time that you were on that show translate into your writing because your writing shows none of it <laughs> none of it and it shouldn't be that even through fucking some weird osmosis you should have picked up on at least a tenth of it <laughs> and been able to interject that into your own writing to make mm. it better but it's it's absent it's completely absent and i don't get it Th this is and and, I, and we've said this before i remember when you and i reviewed the boss and we said the same thing where we were like i could see this character and this story working in something that has better focus, better direction, a better script behind it. Uh, this I thought was way worse than than the boss. But again, like even the direction itself, this movie's directed like a Tyler Perry film. Like there are the, just not the not acrimony though. No, no, no. oh no, that, that movie's a goddamn masterpiece. Um, <laughs> changed my mind. Um, this, like, no, like that. There are like just random shots where it'll just cut away to somebody who I didn't know they were in this scene until they just cut away to them to say a line that should have been left out of this scene. This happens multiple times. Things just end. There are. We, th I was thrown through a loop for some different just shots. Like, it was like sitting through a Tyler Perry film where, like, one scene shots or one scene is shot with these two sets of characters sitting um, at a desk. And I thought it was two desks and that they were facing something else because there's no establishing shot and nothing was really suggesting it would be shot otherwise until finally an establishing shot comes into it and they're sitting across from each other like you, you mean like when there's only like two people at a wedding and then all of a sudden there are like 30 people at a wedding Dude, yeah <laughs> <laughs> The, so uh, maybe it's a little bit more like acrimony than I than I want to give it credit for. <laughs> At least that movie was amazing. Oh, like shit. this is like uh, a fucking like single mom's club it's, shit. It's like I feel like she needs to come up with stories and let somebody else write the script. Uh -huh. Pitch the ideas, because I feel like she's got good ideas. Like you were saying with the boss, I don't think this is necessarily a bad idea. I just don't think she's capable of writing it. Yeah, even... That, it like, the that idea, I mean, you can mine so much stuff of somebody having drop out of school and then 20-some-odd years later coming mm -hmm. back. The possibilities there are endless, but they go in the wrong direction for all of them. It, or the ones that or the ideas that should work mm -hmm. just do not yeah i mean even though like yeah we've seen it done well and back to school but even with that i mean we, we see movies plenty of times that that we like that 
we've seen before in, in something else, but they still make something out of it, or maybe they make something fresh, or, you know, make, make it feel genuine, or, you know, just somewhat enjoyable. I mean, this thing comes across like a TV movie, a yeah. bad TV movie. Something really, really bad you'd see on, uh, you mentioned earlier, ABC on Family. ABC Family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, that's the level of shit we're dealing with here. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And this movie is way too goddamn long for scenes that just should have been cut so much sooner. Like, she, uh, she's nervous about speaking in front of crowds okay. and has to give an oral presentation, which goes on for five hours of her just sweating, getting tissue stuck to her face, passing out. I mean, don't worry. By the end of it, it's fine. By the end of it, she's good at it now. <clears throat> or can at least do it, because, all right, fine. Um, there, there's, there's so little shit here that we, cause her ex-husband is getting married to Julie Bowen in the film and they he's, run. He's kind of wasted too. Like, oh like, dude, I, yeah. You, she could totally be a bitch. Mm -hmm. Like she needed, they needed to amp that up and she's just not hardly in it at all. Yeah, no, not not really. Like, and she they they have a scene with her in a restaurant where she and Matt Walsh say, uh, "Oh, we're getting married next week," and then shenanigans happen at the dinner, and then it's the next, it's literally the next scene. Melissa McCarthy's sitting in the library, and her daughter comes in and goes like. Or no, one of her friends comes in and says like, uh, oh, your ex-husband's getting married tonight. There is so little shit happening in the story that just a week just went by. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I guess nothing interesting happened there. That's okay. Nothing's interesting happening in the time we're actually seeing in front of the fucking screen. Oh, it could, this could just skip around all over the goddamn place if it wanted to. I hated this movie. I hated this movie so goddamn much. What even? Uh... <laughs> uh, damn it, man. Yes, yes. Fuck. <laughs> now, see, that used to be my reaction. Uh -huh. Now I'm just fucking defeated. <laughs> now it's just like, okay, what is it this time? Yep, yep. Same shit, different day. <laughs> that's that's what this Melissa McCarthy type of movie has become to me. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I, I know it's, what you mean. I just, I can't get up the energy to care and get pissed off anymore. I can't. Certain things... I still can like but but I, I know what you mean in that like okay take for instance uh, I, uh, Easter I did an episode on this 90s baby Huey movie like it's just shit kids movie that I watched there was a time when I would have watched that and have just been and would have needed to take like frequent breaks and just go around and pace <laughs> and then get back to it and continue taking my notes and just have a shot or something. Now, when I was sitting through watching the Baby Huey movie, oh, don't get me wrong, it's so <laughs> fucking bad. It's just a kind of bad that at this point I've seen a bunch of times before. And I mean, so it. And I've, I've seen a lot of shitbag movies like this, too. I mean, just last year, there was The House, which was kind of bad for some... Oh, it was really bad, but I mean, it was bad for kind of similar reasons as, as, as this. But this one I hated worse. At least The House had a few funny moments with Jason Manzukis. So, I'll... I'll <laughs> this this one this, this one got me it it it, it, it just did uh, like this one i could <laughs> i couldn't i was like when it got to its 20th ending i just was just sitting there slouched and just like kicked my leg out on the rail like it's not gonna end yeah. it is not going to end <laughs> it's just i don't know where we're at in this story for all i know this is only halfway into the movie <laughs> <laughs> well, and they cut from her midterm to graduation. Which, to graduation. 
I was wondering about that too. Like I'm like, uh, I feel like last I checked, midterm was halfway through the school year. <laughs> I mean, it's only been a year since I graduated college, so what do I know? But last I checked, midterms happened in the middle of the school year. So you're saying from the midterm to graduation, everything was uneventful because everything happened the oh, first I, half of the school. I believe it. I, I, I totally believe that nothing eventful happened I, in that uh, time. Just... <laughs> What'd you think, baby? <laughs> I'm getting kind of hot back here. See, she, 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 she liked out. it. She was really turned on by this movie. <laughs> no, I just see a bug in the corner right here. It's kind of starting to freak me out. Killing um, the bug. Another bug. I hate summer so much. Um, I have nothing really to say, so that's why I'm kind of laying down. <laughs> I was just bored, and I was like, I guess I'll go and tag along in this one. And I leaned over to you like 30 minutes in and went, you're regretting coming here, aren't you? <laughs> And that's when she goes, I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back to school part two. Brad goes back to count now. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta finish my degree now. In archaeology. In archaeology. <laughs> Your lost passion. It's my passion. Yeah. You know, I, there were moments I was laughing because if I didn't laugh, I was gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> and it just... I did. I had to. I had to get it out somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and there was no anger there. It was just she's beaten me. Are you folks happy? She has beaten me. I can't <laughs> with a fret paddle. I yeah, D Rock. Mm -hmm. I I can't anymore. I just can't. I can't. Just watch, I just, just watch back to school. Watch Animal House. They try redoing the, uh, it's not over. They, they try doing that in this movie, too. <laughs> Only not as good, because fucking duh. Because <laughs> Melissa McCarthy is not Belushi. That's fucking why. <laughs> Although she could be if she fucking put some effort into it and let somebody else do her fucking writing for her. Because the writing. she's got mm. fucking comedic timing. That's never been an issue. Mm -hmm. But fuck all, man. I fuck this movie. I, I so don't. You know what? Fuck it. I am going to get pissed off. <laughs> I knew it. Fuck. <laughs> How the fuck did you go from Suki to this? <laughs> Suki is a fucking treasure. Mm -hmm. I, my wife watches Gilmore Girls all the goddamn time. Mm -hmm. She's obsessed, yes. But you know what? I'll sit there and watch and I still enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. And I still enjoy watching Suki mm -hmm. because she's a fucking great character. And mm -hmm. Melissa McCarthy acts the fuck out of that. Oh, t dude, totally. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, no. No. That shouldn't be humanly possible. Most people throughout their acting careers, they get better. They don't go from good to shit. <laughs> Especially spending all, like I said, you spend so much goddamn time in that show. Watching these other actors, other great actors, watching this right, acting this writing out, Reading these scripts, going, this is really good, and you, and from that you take this. <laughs> this is what you come up with. Like why? No, just no. Well, I mean, God it, it damn was, it! Her next movie does look pretty good. <laughs> yeah, because she's not fucking writing or directing it, and she's not playing a Melissa McCarthy character. <laughs> Somebody's like, you know what? We're not doing fat comedy. We're not doing old comedy. Listen, we're going to put you in a serious role. Mm -hmm. For which you can actually do if you... Because we've seen it. But why? God damn it. <laughs> I knew if I kept going long enough, I'd get some rage out. <sighs> it's like the I, last gasp of my, my hope yeah. and dignity. Oh, just there it is. my fucking body. <sighs> yeah. God. Still had one in there. Damn it, Melissa McCarthy. I, uh... God I, damn you. I don't recommend this at all in any fucking way, shape, or form do I recommend this movie. <laughs> really? I thought you were going to give it a no. glowing review after no, all that. Like, Go see it, because it's got a great, it's a great movie. There's some, there's some stuff where I'm like, yeah, it wasn't great, but fine, rental, whatever. This, no, fuck no. No fucking rental or Redbox or any Netflix streaming shit. Fuck no. The only red box should be you burning it down, the flames shooting higher as her <laughs> face melts off. 
straight out of Indiana Jones since we're talking about archaeology. <laughs> straight fucking just... Yeah. <sighs> well, tomorrow I'll be at uh, Breaking In. Mm. It was supposed to see Breaking In and this movie tonight, but Sarah had to end up working late, so we're going to see Breaking In tomorrow, which... We were originally going to be seeing this at like 10. Thank fucking God that we didn't go see this. At so we went to, since we didn't go to breaking in, we caught the 7 o'clock of this, of this shit. Thank fucking God. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Take care.